I'm with Philippe Mengal, who's the executive director of the BBI um, joint undertaking with the EU. Philippe, a very interesting presentation this morning. Now, you said you have a, um, uh, you're looking at an industry with a 695 billion euro turnover. Um, can you give us any idea of what percentage of that goes to, or what proportion of that goes to packaging? Oh, what proportion goes to packaging? Uh, I could approach that by looking at bioplastics because what we look at is only the bio-based side. So it is the non-food side, the non-edible side of the whole bioeconomy. Uh, and if I look at a bioplastic that represents uh, overall 27,000 jobs, uh, I think that today it's only a few percent of the whole packaging packaging uh, industry. It's quite little, but with an incredible growth, not only because of the demand of citizens, what they see about pollution and so on, new regulation, which was discussed uh, today, mm -hmm. and a wonderful pipeline of innovation that can deliver a solution that fits with the new uh, regulation context. So it would be fair to say that the packaging is going to be increasingly sort of prominent in your in your thinking over the coming years. Yes, ab absolutely. Uh, when I look at the current portfolio of project of the, the BBI, it's uh, overall one third of the project that deal with bioplastic, and a lot of them are directly related with packaging. Packaging, not only necessarily dropping uh, plastic, but most of them is about developing and delivering a new functionality, like bacteriostatic, uh, gas barrier, of course, end of life, biodegradability, or easy recyclability. So it's a really important part of our portfolio. Very good. So a healthy percentage of one third of your, of your activity. Um, have you been able to get, have you able to help to get biorefineries established in Europe? Are there biorefineries in Europe? Yes, there, there, there is a lot. Again, if I talk about our portfolio, because the end objective of the BBI is to attract investment in uh, Europe. In this sector, Europe, uh, European companies, organizations and universities have always been excellent in developing science and technology. Mm. But for different reasons, most of the investment were done outside Europe. Mm. So one of the objectives of the BBI is to keep the investment here. Where we are today in terms of biorefinery, we have in our project seven biorefineries, ongoing data, commercial side, commercial uh, size, sorry, but first of the kind in Europe. And the good news as well is that there are completely different type of model of biorefineries and quite well spread across Europe, showing that this bio-based business, bio-based plastic, bio-based packaging is not only a business for some Western countries, so it's really well spread in Europe. Basically, where is the feedstock? Who is investing in these biorefineries? Are they uh, petrochemical companies or are they, are they new entrants into the market? A mix. A mix. You, you, you can have uh, biorefineries where it is a cooperative of farmer investing. Mm. You have also biorefineries, biorefineries which are pure petrochemical companies, but large size petrochemical companies or very specialized companies like Novament. It was an example I have mm. mentioned. Another example is the leader of pellet, wood pellet production, who is now investing in a biorefinery not to develop new pellets that burn that we can, can burn better, no, but to develop high added value products. So you see, it's a very, very mixed of, uh, of, of uh, investment profile. Well, just to take one step back then, and you mentioned uh, a couple of the projects in over Montmartre, that's in Sardinia, I believe, is that right? Um, so uh, how much arable land is available, unutilized arable land is available within the EU? Oh, <laughs> strategic question. Honestly, I have to be very, very prudent. I know, it's, I know it's a lot and it's by far enough compared to what we need in terms of development of bio-based products. So I don't include uh, there the biofuel uh, side, which is supposed to consume a, a, a lot of biological uh, feedstock. But for material, it's by far enough. And it's not only abundant uh, land, available land, uh, unused land where there is a lot, but it's uh, mainly about available feedstock. If you look at the forest, for instance, Europe, nobody knows that, nobody says that. Europe is the only continent on the planet where the forests grow. 
other continent introduced. In Europe, it is growing. Municipal solid waste, it's millions of tons of feedstock that could be valor valorized. Uh, water, wastewater. Now, what do we do? We destroy it in wastewater treatment plant. So there is a huge potential. So one of our ambitions is to address that, but also have dedicated crop, like an example I have presented, but a crop grows on abundant land semi-arid uh, area. So we think it can perfectly be addressed, and that's in our strategy, without any competition with food production. Very good. Okay, so we've got the land, we've got the biorefineries coming on stream. Um, in aiming to develop bio-based as a genuine alternative to fossil fuel-based plastics, um, how do you accelerate scale to deliver cost competitiveness? Cost competitiveness of a new functionality, of a new functionality, uh, so, so so that you don't compete only with cost price. You know, if you have a, a, a bioplastic that have a by far better uh, gas barrier, you can reduce the amount of plastic you use, and you offer new functionality, so you are more competitive. If you develop a drop-in plastic, the same discussion is on price, because the added value of the green label can justify plus 15, plus 20 percent. On top of this, if you look at, uh -huh. but yes, that, 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 if, it is, is if the only added value is bio-based and no other functionality. So in other words, consumers will pay the green premium? Yes, but like in other, in other application, the green premium, it's 15, generally speaking, it's 10 to 20 uh, percent for the green premium. And we are convinced because your question is how you can improve that by investing in projects that deals with the development of new functionalities. That's the axis our uh, members has decided to, to, to follow. All right. I've just got one last question. I mean, you, you've flagged up a number of projects, but there, there was one you mentioned but didn't really go into a lot of detail, and that was the, the Road to Bio project that's upcoming. Can you just explain that a little bit more to us? Yeah, so that's a CSA project, so it's not a research and innovation project. And by CSA? By CSA you mean? Uh, support actions. Support action. Thank These you. are actions that aim at supporting market uptake, Fine. facilitate uh, the entry of product in the market by different intervention, look at consumer awareness, regulation, incentives that can be developed. And the aim of this project was to discuss with key stakeholders of the current chemical industry what is their roadmap, what is their preferred roadmap to, to to transform the European chemical industry with the bio-based chemical industry side in it. So that's about establishing this uh, roadmap so that we have a, a, a coherent reference framework for it. So this is bringing petrochemical into a bio-based future? In a certain way. <laughs>